Good morning, folks. We've got major hail and windstorms, a very large earthquake, Mars, Comet Wurtnan, exoplanets, stellar growth, and out into deep space. Let's start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. Bright region departing with dark patches visible turning through. Those are the coronal holes. Without sunspots or solar flares or other eruptive activity, we go to the solar wind. Telemetry most important here is speed today, purple in the middle, a dropout of intensity leaving geomagnetic conditions very calm this morning. You will recall, the coronal holes are lined up one after another. While normally we just wait for them to face Earth to call the earthquake watch, we need more with so many, like the phi angle shift switching to indicate interplanetary magnetic fields are pointing from the sun directly to Earth. That's the little V hitch in the middle of the panel at 1646 UTC and 14 minutes later, 7.3 struck near the Alaska Kamchatka meeting place. It is also worth noting, four shock concerns from Papua east towards Vanuatu must not be ignored. Let's go to weather where no tornadoes have yet been confirmed in central Florida yesterday, but the damage is there. At very least, it was a major wind event, and there is considerable toll taken on infrastructure from a convergence line that will continue up the coast, keep lashing today, and put snow on the west side of it. Nobody blames anyone in the comment section for thinking I'm from Australia. I can't seem to stop reporting ungodly hail, but it's not like I've got a choice. Joking aside, these are in fact very dangerous sizes for hail, and we are seeing that more and more across the world. Let's go back to wind, but shift to British Columbia. Wind so powerful that the waves broke a pier in half. At one point, nearly 300,000 people were out of power as trees demolished lines. The photos coming in of the damage to houses is pretty much all either wind-ripped roofs or trees falling due to that wind. The same waves that took out the pier were hitting the seawalls and jumping out of the pan. Monster wave crash image says it all. Wanted to share this graphic appearing in a weather.com article. It shows the southwest mega drought lasting nearly 20 years now, but I find it notable that these mega droughts are spaced by grand solar cycles, with the droughts hitting just before the onset of grand minimum, followed by peaks of rainfall to follow the drought. That is a seismometer on Mars. Well played, Insight Lander. I know Comet 46P, Wurton it, making headway in the headlines, but many of you don't have a scope or even a clue how to track the skies with it if you had one. Well, here's the optical view of the green-eyed monster and then radio and ultraviolet views from Alma and Hubble, respectively. Jumping further out to exoplanets shows us a planet largely made of sapphires and rubies. The chemical composition is perfect for their formation based on the initial spectroscopy reading. These are simply the oxidized versions of calcium and aluminum, but here on Earth we know those make gorgeous gems. Imagine seeing a whole planet of it. Interesting article on a stellar growth spurt. Caltech says material feeding the size of the star finally hit a critical point, and a single star itself released a cosmic jet after its big meal. Interesting last two stories here. First, we have Penn State looking at black holes and reinventing the description of the processes and outcome of the infall. A rewrite to these cosmic nuclei is in order according to most plasma and electric universe proponents, and while this is more of a modification to gravity, it is still a step away from the old paradigm. Last but not least, they claim to be able to trace dark matter distribution and movement within distant galaxy clusters. They say the light producing material between the galaxy clusters will fall with dark matter, so by watching one, they're really watching the other, they say. Just to be clear, they are only going to be tracking normal matter. That's all they see. By following the light, you will indeed find the missing matter. It's just likely to be diffuse dust and plasma. The same way that waving my hand through the air will cause a physicist to say, I have waved through dark matter particles without any proof. That's how they're following the light of deep space here. We've got wind maps followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.